Hey everybody, if you were expecting a part 2 to last week's episode, that's actually going to be coming next week. But stay tuned anyhow, we got a spicy little episode for you here, hope you enjoy. Alright, here's the pitch. Hey Google, countdown from 15 minutes. Alright, we've got a timer set. Got a timer. We've got 15 minutes. We have less than 15 minutes. You're we've got, right now. well... Thank you, Google. She just started the timer. So okay. we've got 15 minutes starting three A seconds ago. ago. Yeah, so less than 15. We're going to break up into, into individual groups, right. us in our own minds, and we're going to create an idea for an app. Right. Like the thing on your phone. Oh, okay. I thought an appetizer. No, that's why I clarified. Okay. An app for your phone. So we're going to break up... We're not, breaking up. Not in that way. <laughs> and then we're going to come back together. Like the Beatles. Like the Beatles. Except they what? didn't come together and one of them got shot. And the other... Cancer. One, one, of, one of them got cancer. Yeah. Aw, oh, George. And then we're going to pitch the app ideas to each <laughs> and other. And then one of them was Ringo. Don't pitch... I like Ringo. <laughs> oh, wait. Apps. And then the best app is going to win the crown that I made. See, oh. See this crown that I made? Dang, dude, you put a lot of work into so, that thing. It's such an intricate crown. I'm so, it, it's so heavy looking, too. Dang. Notice how your hands have you tremble, like actually holding it. Have you been making that like crown for like as long as this podcast has been going on? Is that solid like, That, like, that, that took like more than like a week to make. This is something you've had for a while. <laughs> Dang, dude. It's encrusted with jewels. I only suppose you robbed them from somewhere. We have like less than 14 <laughs> minutes now at this point. Right, right. All right, let's go. Break. I always want to say break. For example, did you ever want to go one place when the gang wanted to go somewhere else? What did you do? Did you ever want to go one place? What did you do? For example, the gang wanted to go somewhere else. What did you do? You on the thing off the Dallas Street? No. <laughs> Are we recording again? Okay. Hi and welcome to <laughs> Tangent. I'm Jameson Wylanman. I'm Isaac Hopwood. I am Maxwell Mahoney. Wow. The whole gang. And we're back from spending the entire 15 very real minutes that we did spend developing app or apps. And now we're back and we're going to present our apps one to another, just like the Bible said to. <laughs> That's right. Who's going first? I, no, no, no pushback on that? No pushback on the... <laughs> Actually, I'll go, I'll go first. Oh, Max okay. goes first. first. Yeah. Okay. okay. So anyway, um, recently, like... I've been like watching this one show. I don't know. I don't. I don't know where I was going with it. Anyway. Well, so anyway, I was thinking like people. People. <laughs> hold on. What? What show? I was are you watching, watching. What's the show? I was watching a it's show. Gonna ruin That's it. unrelated to what I'm it's talking gonna about. It's gonna ruin it. <laughs> Isaac, it's gonna ruin it. Give it's us the idea. It. Okay. So like you, you know how like pe people definitely like need cars. It's you know a what black I mean? Mirror. And like there, there's like a problem that like people have for like when they get new cars. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's the problem? <laughs> What is it? what is the problem? So, so like one of the main parts of your car is like the steering wheel. Yeah, you know what I mean, so like I've, that's I've, true. I've always you're doing the thing. I'm like you're doing the thing. Bro. You're doing the I'm thing. I'm thinking bro. like so, so like obviously there are some cars out there like at dealerships that have like faulty steering wheels. So I was thinking, what if we had an app that got you connected to specific dealerships that have cars. Where the steering wheels don't fly out the window. <laughs> Max is doing a bit from a television show called I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. It's, I don't know if it's obscure. Do you know it, Isaac? I don't know the, I know the show. I haven't, I don't know this reference. Oh my goodness. So, so like, anyway, I thought that was a problem that, like, we, obviously in the world, we shouldn't have, like, steering wheels that fly out the window of your car when you're you driving. Want, you want to know what I think we don't need in the world, Max? <laughs> There's no good. There's no good follow up to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to say this story that happened once to me. Uh, I was driving along the road. I think I was in the. Back I cannot seat, believe that there is a 
an actual story that you have that's related to the thing that just came out of his mouth. Yeah. Fine. No. Shoot. Go for it. Yeah. So I was dri- I was in the back seat. This I was like a teenager at this point, mm-hmm. so I wasn't driving, but mm-hmm. I was uh, driving along the road. Uh, I think it was right near your house, actually. It was on like Thompson or something. Oh, cool. And the car in front of me, it was like a Prius or something like that. Yeah. It's rear left tire. <laughs> so it made a slight, no, no. So it made a slight left turn. Right. But it's rear right tire just kept going. <laughs> so it, it, we were to make it this turn. And then the tire just like kept going straight. Wow. And it rolled into the parking lot of this motel mm-hmm. where the custodian came out and grabbed the tire and then took it into the back of the motel and just <laughs> stole it. What? Wait, wait, wait. So there was no... Did he look around to see if the no, tire came from he, him? Was like, it like one swift motion of his <laughs> mind? He grabbed he it just like, and took it. It's almost like he knew it was there. It was just like walking. It was like, I, I expected this. I saw this in my visions last when night. When Mr. Yeah. Britannica was making his dictionary, when he thought of the word yoink, that was the scenario. <laughs> yes. That's the exact scenario. Yeah, it is. Mr. Arthur Britannica. <laughs> Love the man. <laughs> um, t- that's somewhat related to yes. your app. Um, anyway. That would maybe be an app by the same company, mm-hmm. Tangent yes. Incorporated. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, we own all app ideas under the Tangent Inc. umbrella. That's a thing we're gonna have to. But don't look it up. Oh, don't, don't, look, look, don't it up. look it up. Don't look it up. But we do Please. own these ideas, and we will profit, and we will. We will. Uh, well, I was trying to think of a cool way of saying Sue. Uh, what's it? We, I'll, I'll l- l- litigate. We'll litigate. I'm litigating right now. Well, that, that's a different matter. Though. That lost all meaning of that word. So no. I well, right. Max, any other ideas? Is that your, your uh, big, your big heavy hitter? I was mean, good. I mean, I liked it. Yeah. I mean, An I mean, app that digitally you know, connects you to people who have steering wheels that don't fall off. Well, no, here's specifically the, dealerships. dealerships. Here's another, yeah, here's I, I another mean, like, thing. Have you guys seen Mad Max Fury Road? Yes. yes. All right, you know that yeah, they, part, they have detachable steering wheel. They wheels, take the steering wheel out, and he holds it up. He says, like, you know, Valhalla, whatever. Yeah. Remember when so, wrench his steering wheel? Yes. When so he, here's the thing. Maybe the the likelihood of a dealership selling a car with a detachable steering wheel is not determined on the dealership, but the type of customers who shop at that dealership. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. if, so well, if there are dealerships where a bunch of, like, Half Life War Boys yeah. shop at that dealership. Right. Maybe they all got cancer. You know, that's got a ping on the map of this steering wheel will probably not stay in this. Exactly. Car very like long. They, like people that want removable steering wheels can go to this app and know Ooh. that if they Once. if they fi- if they don't find a dealership that they're looking for on there, they know that they will have cars that have steering wheels. Yeah, that's great. But you that's don't good. want that. You want a steering wheel you that doesn't. What if you're a, what if you're a comma crazy war boy? Yes. In Wait, post-apocalyptic want- nuclear wasteland Australia. I only want the steering wheel off if I'm about to commit suicide after I've sprayed the stuff on my teeth <laughs> and I've yelled, witness me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you gotta know where to shop exactly. for those detachable steering wheels. Exactly. And, like, all you gotta hey, do is just like compare it with Google Maps and you know if it's, like, if it's on Google Maps and it's not on this app, then therefore it has cars with detachable steering wheels that will fly out the window while you're driving. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, without detachable, detachable steering wheels, wrench would never be steering wheel. Wrench, wrench steering. Uh, I'm thinking about wrench's steering wheel right now, guys, and it's making me so happy. <laughs> that's so weird. All right, so I know that you guys have multiple ideas. I have one big app idea, so I want to go last. That's fine. Okay, do you mind if I go next, Max? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, first idea. It's not the hottest idea, but it's a good one. I feel it's solid. It's got legs, and it stands on them. It's called Cider. S-I-D-R. Uh, and uh, here's the pitch. It's Uber, but for motorcycle sidecar rides. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it just connects you with a guy with a sidecar. Mo- a guy on a motorcycle, he's got a sidecar. You want to be in a sidecar. We've all had that thought. You all yeah. thought, I don't want to drive the I mean, like, especially cycle. in, like, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It looks awesome. You I get mean, to I mean, be Indi- Sean Indi- Connery, but exactly. you don't open palm hit women. It's wrong. I don't exactly. care what he says. <laughs> what? That's a good... You've never heard that interview where Sean Connery's like, 
Oh, I think it's okay to open sh- uh, open palm slap a woman. <laughs> you never heard you that? said that? Yeah. <laughs> It's like Damn. Barbara Walters or something like that. And I'm just like, ah, James Bond. He's the living embodiment of James Bond. Yeah, it's like, why can't you just be weird and rapey in those movies I love? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <Wow>. half <laughs> idea. Anyways, hey, what what's the guy? In Indiana Jones, who's the who's the guy in the sidecar? It is Sean Connery, his dad. Yeah. It's his dad. In, Indiana Wait, Jones is... Last not, not Harrison Ford's dad. No, Indiana I'm, Jones is dead. I'm talking about... No, I'm talking about... Isn't there like a... Little kid in the sidecar at one point in the second. Well, that, movie? that was that was short round, and I don't think short that, round. Yeah. Short round drives a yeah. car. That's yeah, he, right. Short yeah. round. He doesn't get he doesn't, he doesn't like oh brother where art thou style with the little with yeah. the little like wooden yeah, exactly yeah. shoe. Yeah, okay. I Surround's feel like we're best. I feel like hey. we're tangenting my app idea and not focusing on how great I needed compliments. Hey, here. I'll tell you what uh, about movies with people I don't who need to hear are I need you to hear I need you to look into my eyes and say yeah I want to ride in a motorcycle cycle okay I'm gonna let you I finish. actually do you take one what about a moped yeah moped sidecar see like we live in <laughs> Northwest Arkansas right which if you go down to Fayetteville right mm-hmm. half of the population because of students right. have mopeds right. there's literally Within two blocks of each other, there are two moped dealerships, and one of them is a is a moped exclusive like parts dealer, like parts dealer, and like they do moped repairs. Where and that's you would it. purchase the sidecar for your moped. Also, before we get back to there, do do you do you have to have like a permit or a license to like you know I you have to have like a motorcycle license right that's like different from your driver's license. Do you have to have one? Does that like apply to mopeds? As I well? assume that you would. I mean, someone so, out, someone out there with a moped. It depends on how know. fast it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man, I have to break my veil of <sighs> joking stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you. I, I mean, it's, I it's a similar license, a, right? No, I think it depends on the type of motor vehicle and how fast okay. it goes before you have Dude, to. Dude, so a driver's license. Freaking, will look apply at us. We, we literally made a sitcom about a DMV, and we don't know the details the DMV. of. Yeah, the DMV when I when I was writing that script, license. and I, I began to think about like. Uh, the type of paperwork you'd need. Instead of <laughs> saying it, I just said the word paperwork. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's safer. Yeah. Um, honestly, in in retrospect, I I'm not even like I did a little bit of research. I'm not even sure that the DMV is the place where you do your driver's license test. I think it's generally just like a oh, building. Oh no, it's the Department of Motor Vehicles. Yeah. 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 I, well, that, I didn't that do is mine the DMV. At the DMV. Oh, that's what DMV Department stands of for. Motor Vehicles. Guys, I did not realize that until this moment. Crazy. Uh, cider. Yeah, cider. It's for your motorcycle sidecar. Is that it? Right. Is it cheaper than Uber? Like, nope. what's the... It's more expensive <laughs> than Uber. No, it's the exact same price. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean this in every Are there some the days word. when, like, uh, the drivers get paid more? It is just Uber for motorcycle sidecars. It's only that. Mm-hmm. Okay. For prom night. Mm-hmm. For, <laughs> for the first day on the job and you want to feel, feel a little thrill. You know? Do, do you have to bring your own helmet? No. They have one? No. Well, depend, depend, it's depends on the it depends can. on the driver. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like it's I, like not every Uber driver is going to have a bottle of water waiting for you. Or a car you. charger or mints. Yeah, not all of them are going to offer you an ox cord. Yeah. Some aren't going to offer you a helmet on cider. <laughs> That's the risk you take. And uh, cider's not responsible for any terrible <laughs> motorcycle deaths that may occur. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I wanna I wanna go on a long road trip to like San Francisco, and In only side take side. cider. Yeah, that yeah, but, you know maybe not. Someone won't go all the way, so you kind of have to link up your cider side cars with other side. Cars. Hey, you guys ever seen the show Maniac? I watched like five episodes I love that of show. it, and then I saw oh man, it. it's great. It's so good. A- Ad Buddy is that what it's called? The thing where they it's Ad Buddy. Anyways, I don't, I don't remember the app. Ad buddy, what's your next app? <laughs> oh yeah, do, do you have more to say? No, I guess we've reached the pinnacle. I mean, it's literally it was, Uber for motorcycle sidecars. And... I think that's all he had to say about it from the okay. beginning. Yeah, but I was expecting more praise from you guys. I love it. We're a tough crowd. I'm not Max. <laughs> I'm a it. tough crowd. You're Can tough. one person be a crowd? Yes. I've always wanted but to they feel have like to Sean be like, Connery. They have to have like a... Multiple what? <laughs> what? I've always wanted to feel like Sean Connery. Why? 
Because I want to be in the sidecar. I just want his accent. That's it. Also his money. Anyway, what's your app idea? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so this one's actually like very serious. Um, so I, th I thought it'd be nice. Like we, we have like a problem with like, you know, just sexual assault in general in the world. Right. Um, so I was thinking maybe there's a way that we could get an app that like is able to get in contact with like local law enforcement to where uh, if you feel threatened by anything, you can just like open this app, push a button, and it immediately starts recording and send the sending the information to local law enforcement. And then oh. you, then you're able to tell them, um, "I'm recording you. If you do anything, it will be sent to local law enforcement." Here's interesting. So here's something interesting. The ACLU actually has something like that, but it's for recording interactions with law enforcement actually <laughs> it's like a protect yeah. your rights sort of thing if you're mm -hmm. in a car and you don't feel safe maybe you think this cop might shoot me in the face or something like yeah. that you hit record on that and if he does shoot you in the face it's recorded and gets mm -hmm. sent right to their server which is not great that you got shot in the face in that scenario but at least that guy you know he's got a lawsuit coming yeah. he'll be suspended for the force and then found mm -hmm. you know not guilty in trial pretty much <laughs> was that a little too heavy wow <laughs> I like Max's app idea. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and I think, like, the combination of those things together... It would, it would definitely they, be they, difficult. Yeah, like, I mean, like, also... Would it be? Like, I mean, it's, it's I the same it principle be. as uh, Google Drive now, right? Like, I can take a picture on my phone and uh, it syncs it up. Well, it so depends if the, the, if the local law enforcement even cares enough. That's, yeah, true, actually, that's true. Like, you, cause, I mean, technically, this would be a company. You'd have to solicit. But also, yeah. there'd be, like, a lot of, I would hope, this is a weird thing to say. I would hope that there'd be a lot of false alarms. Like, because you never want someone to actually get hurt. So yeah, you hope that in most I mean, of the time yeah. it would be said to them, it'd be like a scenario in which nothing actually It happens. would be the equivalent of Hopefully. someone calling 911, right? Yeah. But it's like... Before they get robbed. Yeah, but it's like with 911... But people do that, right? I mean, like with 911, yeah. like, you, like you don't have... It doesn't like record necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like you can't have like... A video functionality or something like that mm -hmm. uh, that records the interaction or anything like that so um, yeah but I think it would be a thing that's like probably pretty localized you know what I mean like yeah it would have to be be like a statewide or a countywide or maybe even a citywide yeah. type of um, approval or like mm -hmm. you know I, I induction think, into the software I think this sucks don't get me wrong but I think like it needs a button for after I think it needs to record everything, and then I think it needs the send button so that there's not a filter of non... Uh, well, maybe, so there's not a misfire. Well, maybe it sends it, but then automatically, like, uh, when they're done, they find out that nothing actually happened, and then they can press a cancel. Well, oh, like, there'd be a window of, like, yeah. cancellation before yeah. it's, like... but, like, either way, it still gets sent, but maybe there's, like, a, like a mark on it where the, like, law enforcement can view it, but then it's, like, they see a check mark so they know nothing actually happened okay. in the video. Right. Maybe. Yeah, That's inter okay, yeah, because like I, I, there needs to be a scenario in which it's not a bunch of like false alarms mm -hmm. all being sent there that drowns out the actual. For yeah. sure. Yeah, um, but I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, it's also one of those things where um, I can even foresee it being one of those things. I feel like a lot of time there's so much adrenaline in scenarios like that where people would forget to use a resource that they have. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's one of those things like, uh, like on our on your phone, right? Like, your Google Assistant or Siri or whatever is literally always listening to you, right? Mm -hmm. True. But whether or not Amazon or Google or Apple record all that and keep that, right? They legally cannot use that for any reason, right? Because like they have it in their paperwork that they don't actually keep that audio. Maybe what, they so do. What if, what if it was like a situation where you like gave a code word to Siri and Siri was like, I'm a cop now. And, she's, <laughs> yeah, and or, Siri be yeah. listening and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the thing yeah. is, is like your phone's already always listening to you. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, mm -hmm. I feel like all of us have had those experiences where you talk about something and then an ad pops up for it. No, no. Right? I, actually, what I've seen is like, a, I saw a video on YouTube of a guy that like, basically, you, you can actually have like Google's information of you sent to you like through your email oh wow and, like uh there's like it was actually like a crap ton of information yeah like that's interesting like many man. many like many gigabytes yeah um and like a lot like a one folder of it was just him like going i don't want to say it out loud I'm, I'll, I'll do it okay google and then like what he said afterwards uh which makes sense i mean like yeah. because that's technically information that they 
I mean, it's I mean it's the equivalent of you on your Google account ma- doing a Google search, and mm-hmm. then like that specific search yeah. is linked to your account. It's yeah. the same. He, he, but he could just like listen to all the times that he said that specific phrase. I'm thinking That's about crazy. all the times in this podcast where we've said the words "Okay, Google," and if anyone was listening to this out loud, how it triggered their device. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've, I've thought about that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because every time we say it, my Google Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's beeps. what gave me that little bopping idea in my head. I was like, oh. Sorry. Yeah. If anyone has had their device go haywire because yeah. of all of our. But also not sorry, yeah. and we will litigate. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Max, good idea. I like yeah. that. Jameson. Okay, so this is going to feel a little weird coming <laughs> off of that. But my new app idea is called Cider. C I D R. <laughs> uh, and it is a dating app <laughs> like tinder and other such apps uh but here's how Wait, it works what is the previous how does the previous cider work again it's is it s-i-d-r okay. it's uber for motorcycle <laughs> sidecar rides this is c-i-d-r this is a dating app so how it works you have homemade cider <laughs> you upload a profile of your homemade cider with a list of ingredients and a couple pictures. Then you swipe, because swiping on human beings makes you feel superficial and garbage. And you're like, oh, I, am I only interested in how these people look? What is that, am I shallow? That's terrible. No, 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 you gotta swipe on what counts, and it's food, and it's cider specifically. <laughs> so you create uh, a cider. So you're just judging people's cider without actually no, tasting there's it? there's so much more to it, Max. Let me finish. So you upload a cider profile. Then you swipe on left or right for or against other ciders you come across, other cider profiles. After, of course, reading the ingredients and taking a look at the aesthetic appeal of that cider. Then if you decide that you like a cider and you're, both ciders match, now we are off to the tasting section of it, in which you send each other your ciders. You get a taste. Now, if you like the taste of each other's ciders, then you can have a date. This is like like farmersonly.com, <laughs> except cider enthusiasts. Cider, cider <laughs> Like it's it's only people who make homemade cider. I'm worried it might like <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yes. It was a weird, it's a weird statement. Are you ready for it? I'm ready what for it. What if it I only guess. attracts people that are <laughs> um that find weird uh romantic Fetish, 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 fetishization of foods. Oh fetishization of foods. You had a real hard time with that. <laughs> yeah, I did. What if that's what it attracts? I didn't think about that. I might put a pin in my own idea that's otherwise flawless. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think most things could be considered flawless if you have a narrow enough mindset about what it actually Can't accomplishes. Can't you just imagine matching with a nice apple cider on a Friday night, you know it's coming in the mail and in three to five business days. Maybe you hate it. I mean, it's homemade. After you take all. a sip of it and you're like, ooh, ooh, is this love? I don't know yet. I don't, I haven't, I haven't met this person. So you're but saying, you wait, know you like their cider. So you're saying throw all of like judging someone based on their appearance is base and is animalistic, and yes. we throw that in the garbage. But taste. But basing of someone cider. off of their skill of cider making yes. is completely legitimate, and is is the future of dating. Also, How a person makes their cider says so much about them. Let's be honest. But at the same honest. time, you're like judging them like based on how their cider looks. You're not like the ju- ingredient list even, is there. You're looking at the you ingredients. Can't. Okay. It tells me nothing. Hold on, dude. <laughs> Literally, okay. Any it is a profile. <laughs> okay. It is a cider profile. Take you also gotta tell me like humidity, ac- take, acidity. Take the that entire part of it. Take the entire line right. of LaCroix sparkling waters. I don't want to. Well, think about it. <laughs> okay. All of their ingredients are exactly the same. Right. You've got essence carbonated water. Right. But you got and the ingredients are exactly the same. Right. Everything's identical as far as that goes. Yeah. You pour out the coconut. And then you pour out the, I don't know, pe- and the, 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 the peanuts, the pe- peanut, the peanut, <laughs> the peanut flavor, one. the peanut It's going to be completely <laughs> different, right? <laughs> peanut flavored LaCroix is the nastiest what? thing I've ever uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but no. the ingredients were exactly the same, right? I mean, so... I'll be real with you. Cider is more than the its ingredients. The ingredients for human beings are the exactly the same, Isaac. How you many... just proved my point! How many people are... <laughs> you just did it! No, I'm saying it works. It's different. Here's my thing. How many... The point of a dating How app How many is girls that... are on Tinder, or just people in general, girls and boys, and they're like, my favorite show's The Office. I'm quirky. <laughs> and that's who they are as a person. When you're on cider, yeah, there's some people with some pretty basic ciders, but the people willing to experiment... <laughs> For people willing to experiment, those are the ones that catch your eye. And so that forces you to experiment as well because you want to be noticed. You want to be different. You want to be flavorful and you want to have ingredients that are new, fresh, and interesting. And little do you know that all cider recipes uploaded to cider are now owned by Tangent are Incorporated. Now, are now owned by Tangent Incorporated. <laughs> they are intellectual property. We are going to make products out of it and we will litigate. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go again? <laughs> Max, do you have another app? All right, what we got? All right. So uh, basically, I always have tro like a problem with like picking what I'm going to watch on Netflix. Like right. I literally spend more time looking for what I'm going to watch. You're staring at that little slider watching. thing. You look yeah. at everything. So Clicking I was thinking, what if there was an app that like can connect all your streaming services that you have downloaded? Like you just log into it, then it can like see your watch list. Right. And you just pick a randomized button, right. and it just tells you what to watch. But how many times do you guys actually watch the things that are on your watch list? So here, I like, actually do, but like... Here's my thing. I think if you wanted to watch that movie, instead of adding it to your watch list, you would have watched it. I actually know. <laughs> the, the, there's kind of like some science behind that in a way. Like, it, it, like in terms of... This is a little off topic. Okay. Refrigerators. Basically, I love refrigerators. <laughs> so basically, like whenever you're at the store, like you know how like everything seems appealing. Yes. Um, but basically, some scientists like like uh, studies have shown that like the second you put something in your fridge, it like automatically becomes less interesting to you. Like you don't care about it as much. Mm, makes sense. So I feel like what kind of this kind of goes on like what you you might be saying like with streaming services like you so add it to your watch list. Watch lists, lists are the refrigerators. Exactly. Of the movies. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think I think what would be interesting is if it had some sort of algorithm, mm -hmm. right? That like because often it's it's more it's less about like what it is you're watching and like how you feel. You mm -hmm. know, whenever you're bored and you want to watch something, but like the things that you usually watch don't really like sound interesting. I feel mm -hmm. like it has to do with like I want to watch something quirky, kind of funny, but something that's sci-fi. Yeah, you know, and like. It had it's smart enough to like combine all these elements to like give you a recommendation that you'd want to watch. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, for sure. I think that'd be cool. So like I, that's my biggest problem with like these streaming services is like they don't have like that niche I'm looking for. Like like that's why. What would that niche be? I don't know. I, here's what I wish. Really, wouldn't that kind of be the Criterion Channel for you? Kind of. But here's what I want. Here's what I want. I want to have a list not of genres but of. Kind of things like you were talking about, sci-fi, comedy, and stuff. And I want to click on all those, and then I want to see what they have that are in those categories when they're combined together. I don't want to have to click on yeah. comedy, search through all of comedy to find sci-fi mm. comedy. I want to find sci-fi yeah. comedy, quirky. Well, if you're hearing that noise, it means I deleted a joke I decided I didn't like. That sucks. I promise it wasn't mean or anything. I just didn't want you to hear it. Somewhere. Yeah, that's a weird thing. That was Freudian. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Cut, it out. Cut it right out. Cut it right out of the podcast. Get it out. It wasn't funny. It wasn't funny in my head. We're leaving this whole thing in the podcast. No. Kill me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm good now. Wow. <laughs> um. <laughs> I was saying, well, all the power is gone for me now. I'm so sorry. Continue Man. with your thing. Uh, I like Max's idea. That's all I'm saying. Yes. You can throw filters on there and be like, yeah, I want comedy, sci-fi, yeah. Freudian slip, and then... Um, That's beloved genre, Freudian slip. <laughs> Let's make a TV show called Freudian Slip. It's about a bunch of psychologists, but it's like super into slapstick. 
like the front the front the front like image of it on your your streaming service is like some like guy in a suit but he's slipping on a banana peel and he's like forty and slip. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sh- like the worst TV experience I'd ever. Nah, it's great because no, they, psychoan- it, I, I they psychoanalyze like- each other and then they beat each other up Three Stooges style. I f- but what if it had like really morbid undertones? Yeah, I agree. Like, like, but like serious, like psychological issues. Like, like but really it messed up. But with Three Stooges type humor, <laughs> like it's like, boop! I hit you in your forehead, and he's like, "You sure did." It reminds me of what my father used to do, but much harder, and it hurt a lot worse on an emotional level. Do you want to talk about it? You want to get on my couch? Oh, I'm afraid of couches too, and I don't know. I don't want to go into this any further. I hate it the more it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> Da, 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 Jameson, da, da, da. Freudian slip coming to Fox. <laughs> Jameson, you got another app for us? I do. I do. It's called Side Her. This is S I D E space her, the word her, Side Her. And I'm just going to read what I have written. Just going to read it. Uh, <clears throat> are you a dude and don't want to be misogynistic? This app will tell you how not to be. Whenever you are interacting with a female, take a moment to fill in a form on the app describing the scenario and our algorithm will provide you with feminist answers so you can be the best ally you can possibly be. Max, you, the, got, <laughs> Max you got an app idea? I want to explore this. I, 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 think I, I think I'm good on app ideas. That's what I want from a woman. I want to I want to, I want to walk up to her and be like, hold on, give me a moment. I want to take out my phone. I want to open up an app. I want to describe in detail the situation I'm in. I want the algorithm to use keywords from that to match me, kind of like Max's app idea, which I give in keywords, you know, and then match me with answers on how to properly uh, and in a, uh, you know, in a modern way, interact with this person. I want to, I want to take a female and I want to complicate her. And I want to make it difficult for me to understand. And then I want something else to do the work for me. And by doing this, I am feminist. I think that- I don't want to be feminist. I want something to be feminist for me because I don't like talking to girls. They all suck. <laughs> Do women scare you, Jameson? They don't scare me. I just don't want them to get paid as much as me. This will come to haunt me. This will come to haunt me in the future. Please. If I don't say that this is... A, this is obvious. that I, this is, It's obvious what I'm doing, right? I've invented a feminist app that makes you sexist. That was the idea. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um... That's a good bit. Wow. By like taking a person and making them not a person, making them a problem to solve. I've objectified her. It's funny. It is complex. (laughs) It's intellectual and it's a funny idea and I'm not getting the respect I deserve for coming up with that. (laughs) And that's uh, another... Side her. Yeah. And that's another... It's because you're siding with her. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And that's uh, episode two of Freudian Slip. <laughs> the man. Boy, the boys talk about feminism. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, because all the psychologists are men. Because it is a Fox show. <laughs> I don't know what... <laughs> and it's not, it's not like on FX or anything. No, it's on the Fox News program. Right they're after like, Fox and they're like uh, After, uh, no, I don't... Uh, Carlson is that one of them? Tucker, Tucker Carlson. Carlson. After Tucker Carlson, watch the boys, <laughs> watch the watch the watch the psychologist boys as they tackle feminism. That dirty, dirty feminism. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, oh man, you know I'm in this love podcast, with my mother. I think this podcast is going really well, guys. But I don't think women deserve the vote. I'm Freud. But I'm in love with my mother, but she shouldn't vote. And that's a that's a joke from the show. <laughs> I think we're losing the plot here. Did you have another app? Or... I do. Okay. Do you guys want to guess actually? The... I do. Do you want to guess the name? Do you want to guess the name? I mean, I know the name, but I don't know what. I'm, like, where's the emphasis? <laughs> yeah, where's the emphasis? <laughs> How's it spelled? C y d e r cider. And. This is your cyber spider. Cyber spider? Yes. Are you afraid of spiders but want to own one as a pet? 
Uh, here's the solution for you. A camera is placed in a container and that container has a spider on it. Any time of day, you can open up your phone and there's your little spider pet. He's in his container and you can press a button and the container will feed him. And he's somewhere in the world. Maybe he's in Russia or China or somewhere. You don't actually ever have to interact with this spider, but it is your pet and it is your property. And you can feed it. You can play it some jams. You can take little Instagram photos of it. Put some filters on there. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, uh, the dog filter, but on a spider. We haven't seen that yet, huh? No, I No. And it's your little, it's like a Tamagotchi, but it's a real live thing and it could die. And it will. They probably don't have a long probably in a few spin. days. You'll watch it die. That's sad. Yeah, it's not a big container either. I think all of your <laughs> apps have really... Uh, Unique Pro names. Profound, <laughs> really, really profound under undertones. Yeah, how how so with that last one? <laughs> Explain that phrase you just said. <laughs> back up that back up that phrase you just said. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to hear about my app? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, let's hear it. All right. I'm so sorry for taking us off the rails as much as I have this episode. I've had a lot of fun doing it, but I feel bad about it. And I wanted to let you. Well, you want to hear about my app or yeah. what? Oh, are we still recording? I thought you paused it. I, I didn't. No, he you was pulling up his idea. I'm going to put some more water in. I thought you No, no, I want, I want them to hear you walk away and get water. You're emphasizing the fact that you're walking rather than just walking like normal. Yeah, because I don't think the mic could pick it up. I'm also going to emphasize the water sound. <laughs> this is too long. You guys want to hear about my app or what? It takes a while to put water in a thing, man. Your water thing's slow. All right, this app is called Cider. I have another idea. What if there was something that could get you in contact with Max? You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> what if there you was an app it. that could get you in contact with Great Cthulhu? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the. You're saying this app. This app is not called Cider. <laughs> it was a joke that Max disregarded. I'm sorry. It wasn't funny. Sorry. All right. 2020 is whack, right? Yes. We all know this. Right. Many of us are stuck at home mm -hmm. with no point of contact with others except by phone or video chat or social media. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, the hellscape that it may be. Mm. But what if there was an app that combined said things, said hellscapes? Yeah. So that's what I want in anything else is a little bit of hellscape. <laughs> that's why I say that to hey, myself. Hey, but but if you do it with the companion of your friends, right? It's like that uh, that commercial with the the girl and they're trying to stand the taco up and they're like, oh, we can't put this taco up, and she's like, why isn't the bottom flat? And they all give her like a party. I was thinking more like Frodo and Sam and Mordor. I'm thinking of flat tacos. All right. So are those tortillas? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, here's the gist, right? So this this is kind of a, a a tangent to what I'm talking about, but modern video games, right? They bring friends and strangers together in ways that are kind of unprecedented compared to times before and what they were originally designed for, arguably. Uh, they allow friends to stay in touch and people with similar interests to bond from across the world. This method of connection. However, this is obviously scripted. I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm reading this. This method of connection... This is off the top of your head. It is. The method of connection, however, has barriers. Right. If someone's not interested in gaming or does not have the same skill level as their peers at a particular game, the, par the game becomes an insufficient means for the connection between the two parties. And all the other 13-year-olds on Fortnite make fun of me. Yeah, exactly. Jameson knows. So, while approachable games have been created in the past, Animal Crossing... This app. Name one other example. I feel like you got to have at least three when you fall say guys. something like that. Yeah. Fall I'm not guys. saying that you, it's not impossible to. I'm saying that he needed to have at least two other Candy examples. Crush. Nintendo Dogs. There we are. That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, approachable Wii Sports. Well, okay, approach no, no, no. Not four. While approachable <laughs> games have been created in the past, this app right. is different. Okay. While it is a game in its bones, its function is quite unique. It is a meeting place for friends and family to share a game of cornhole. It's a place for business partners to enjoy. You never heard of cornhole? I've heard of cornhole. It's funny. The idea you just said is funny to me. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, virtual corn cornhole. <laughs> you had so much to build up. And your name is virtual cornhole. That's your the name thing. is virtual cornhole. <laughs> no, it's not. No, the point is how how non monumentous it is, right? So let me Can finish. Can you change the background? Can it be like sci fi cornhole? Let me finish. Oh my goodness. It's you a mean place. Like cornhole it's, in so space? It's, it's a place for people to come together and experience life together it's a virtual reality where people can enter it's a social it's a it's a physical place that is a social platform right that is a three-dimensional like place where people can go and interact with people and it's like people can it's like a video it's like a video chat kind of like an mmo not exactly like it's more it, it feels more like some kind of like i want to say kind of like a second life it's sort of like second life <laughs> but my is not an mmo yeah this is a joke this is basically like the oasis from ready player one like it's it's which it, in its own was kind of riffing on second life it's it's like a it, the idea works better in a virtual reality right. existence right yeah. because and that's really the future because that's how of, you line up the cornhole yeah exactly yeah but it i you know if if you take away like all of the whatever Cornhole. thing that I was setting up, like it, it's about having a virtual platform for friends and family to have a place of connection, right? Like I I was thinking of like you guys talked about Fall Guys earlier, and yeah. it's like that's a way for you to like hang out with and interact with your friends, and that's the way that video games are for a lot of people, right? Is that like that's the way that they connect with their friends? So it sounds to me like you want to create a video game that is not that's a not game. a video game. Yeah, that is called Facebook, but it's not. No, right? I understand that, but like I will say that inevitably the thing you create becomes Facebook. But it's more of a it's more of a thing where it's like people don't talk face to face on Facebook, right? Ironically, yeah, right? like people rant at each other through yeah. like paragraphs of whatever on yeah. Facebook. I feel like. This th the idea of this is more of a VR chat. It's like a VR chat, like you actually talk with people, and maybe even yeah. like you actually see their faces, right? I'm just seeing like, I'm just seeing like a Peter Griffin avatar, and he's walking <laughs> at me. I'm talking with my friend, but here he comes, and he wants to talk about his views on current <laughs> see, but, politics. But, but it would be it would be just like social media in the sense that you have a choice to filter those things out right like you can choose to hop on reddit and go to r slash politics and like freaking go at it with some folks right right or hop on twitter and go in the comment section of any of trump's tweets right like right. you can do whatever you want and you can hop right into that fire but you don't have to right you you can make the choice to avoid those things and so i think like what's stopping peter griffin avatar from coming up to me a private chat room oh so like you just connect to a server basically you can like, you could do that with like vr chat now yeah sure but i'm saying like yeah like it's basically a vr chat idea but i think like finding and i mean the magic in this would be in the ui and making it work on a phone or on a tablet where you can interact with like you plug in your headset into well that's the thing it, it wouldn't have phone? to work with a headset like it would it would also oh. um and that that's where the issue is like i'm not sure exactly what that was about. no i can but, see that like maybe like are you saying like the phone kind of becomes like the viewfinder of the yeah. world that's interesting uh i don't i don't know so that because you can already render 3d spaces mm -hmm. on your phone like they could have those apps that like uh, you spin around and it makes even you know stuff like tiktok can understand your reality and then create like a 3d image around it like it's called have, ar yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So like aug augmented reality, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Augmented reality. So like they can probably map that space out, and you could actually that would be interesting if like there's no one standing in your room, but you could invite someone you, to stand you see in your Peter room, Griffin. and you can only see them through your uh, phone. You this see is a Peter Griffin movie just I'm like walk up to you as he's as he's in your room. Yeah. Do you guys want to make a horror movie where virtual reality <laughs> Peter Griffin stalks you? <laughs> Man, uh, yeah. But anyways, that's like a loose idea of my. I mean. Mm -hmm. I saved mine for last, but it wasn't really that interesting. I feel like I, I feel like I was super antagonistic to it, and I don't think it deserves that. Your idea is cool, by the way. Yeah. Like this, like because you're focused a lot more on the connection part of that. The places mm -hmm. like VR chat and um, other things aren't. I will say it does sound like the kind of thing where like 
it's easily twistable into something bad. Yeah. Because here's the thing. You're right about like people going onto Reddit and people going onto that kind of thing. But if you make something that's big and accessible like that, if it becomes as accessible as holding it up on your phone, then it becomes Facebook over time because that's yeah. just kind of the natural progression. Well, you don't want it to be like r slash politics. You don't want it to be like the Twitter section under a Donald Trump thing. And, but and here's the I deal. Don't... Donald Trump creates an avatar on your thing. But but the thing is, is like I like the difference that I see with this is like, People can still go to certain places or servers or whatever to have yeah. those kind of conversations, but it's almost one of those things where I'd prefer chat to be like disabled. Like, I want it to be like vocal, like people to see each other, and like you don't have to see someone's face; you can see their icon. But I want people to actually like talk to each other, type of thing. That's the thing, though. I don't know if that. I don't know. Getting back to internet discourse, I can't believe like we keep returning to this topic time and time again, but like. I, I, I don't know. I, I think there's still anonymity to that. And that's why I think it, it, it would be built differently to where that while those conversations could exist, it wouldn't necessarily be built for them, right? Okay. And I think that the difference is that, you know, there are video games like this that already exist. Right. But somehow translating those to be more mainstream to where, like, this is a legitimate form of communication and connection between friends and family. Right. I think that's where the significance would be. I like it. So, I do like mm-hmm. it. I, I, I think you were right to hold it for last because like it's it's a generally empathetic, mm-hmm. really nice idea about connecting with people and how we can do that with technology. And I like it when technology does that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I like it when we put technology in that direction. For sure. Yeah, I think that's good. There and I go. feel I was only lashing out because I realize now a lot of my ideas were a little bit silly. Not a lot silly. But uh, like a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Like cider... That one's not that good. Sorry, which one? Cider. You know cider. Okay. That one's the least. You best. like cider her though. You still like cider her. Yeah, I like cider. Yeah, that's what that's what we were saying. No, I love cider. Cider. Cider's my favorite one. That we were, that's the one we were talking about. Yeah, cider. All right, it's time for the break. We're going to the break. We're going. There I want we go. A break from cider. <laughs> I said it's like the developing team is all men or something like that <laughs> okay whatever yeah. how would that have been better it's better it's better because it's like here's an app that tells you how to talk to women but women weren't even asked about the process that's funny why are we still talking about side her because it's gold <laughs> that was your worst app whatever are you recording okay we're back Hi, I want to apologize for the most eclectic episode of the podcast yet. Oh, we know it got away from us. We know it was a little bit chaotic, but we hope you enjoyed the ride. It's like a roller coaster. It is like a roller coaster. Speaking of roller coasters, this is the podcast recommends where we recommend things. Wow, what a segue. <laughs> Except not a segue. It is a roller coaster now, isn't it? <laughs> not unlike a-, a roller coaster, I have something to recommend. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I don't yet. I mean, I do. I can go first. I was just making a joke, but I guess. Okay, I'm recommend Max, something Max. right now. Oh. <laughs> okay, fine. I want to recommend uh, the Steve Martin movie L.A. Story, which he wrote but did not direct. He stars in it. It is uh, quirky, and some people don't like quirky, but I am perfectly fine with it. I love it. It is a story about a man who gets love advice from a billboard uh, that talks to him. It's uh kind of sentimental in a way and some people don't like sentimentality i'm recommending a movie that won't be for everyone i guess that's the point but it's a movie for me because it is a movie that invites the idea that the world you exist in is magic if you choose to look at it as such and i don't know if i really so i don't know if i really feel that all the time or even if i agree with it but i feel that magic when i watch the movie and if it makes me feel that then i feel like it's successful it is a movie that it invites you to love and invites you to, to feel things and be weird and be goofy and be funny and be interesting. It's a fantastic satire of L.A. culture in the 90s. Uh, Steve Martin's performance is great. I His favorite movies, uh, in my opinion, are the ones that he also helped in the writing process for. You know, The Jerk, Roxanne, which is a retelling of one of my favorite plays, uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, and uh, this movie, L.A. Story. I feel like Steve Martin's a fantastic writer. I feel like we don't talk about him as such, but I feel like um, he adds a lot to his... He's got a, a very keen comedic touch 
but also a very human one. I feel like mm -hmm. he creates great characters and then he gives those roles to himself to inhabit. And I feel like he does a great job because he knows them. He crafted them. And it's a very good movie. It's I, I can't recommend it enough if you're looking for a little magic. Whether or not you feel that it exists in reality, maybe this movie will convince you otherwise. You a big Cyrano de uh, Bergenac fan? Yeah. No, I read it back in uh, high school. I really love it. I read it in French. You did? Nice. Yeah. That's amazing. You you read it the way Edmund Rostand wrote it. I, I, I all I've ever read are like a couple different translations of it and you never know if like the feeling's right. Yeah. I had one translation I loved and another translation. Okay, new my podcast recommends is the the play Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I changed it. Steve Martin would agree with me. He seemed to love it enough to where he adapted it into a little rom com for this himself. This man's got a big nose. Big old He's got a honker. big nose. <laughs> got a big nose. <laughs> That's a weird well, reference. I'm going to have a hard time writing the description of this to figure out what your actual... Just go with L.A. Story. It's L.A. Story, but it's also Cyrano de Bergerac. But All I'm right. not going to talk about Cyrano so de Bergerac. So he just has two recommendations. I guess That's so. fair. No, but it's mostly L.A. Story, but also Cyrano de Bergerac. Nice. All right, should I go or Max, you want to go? I'll go. Um, right. Anyway, I'm going to recommend uh, Evil Dead 2. Ooh. Yes. Is that a video game? No, oh. it's a... It's a it's a movie. Didn't um, e wasn't Evil Dead a video game series too? No, you're thinking no. of Resident Evil. Dawn Resident of the Dead? Evil. You're thinking of Resident Evil. Yeah. Anyway, Dawn uh, of the Dead is a movie by George Romero. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, anyway, um, Evil Dead is a movie series directed by uh, Samantha Raimi. <laughs> Sam, Sam Raimi. Sam, 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 Sam Raimi. Samantha. <laughs> it's not Samantha. Yeah, it, it is. It is a man. Yeah. He also directed uh, the original Spider-Man movies with uh, Tobey Maguire. Okay, we all know that. Yeah, Max. Uh. Um, anyway, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Evil, Evil Dead Two is just like a really like Wonderful. funny, over over the top, like it. But but also at the same time, it can be genuinely scary. Like there there are some like definitely some parts where you're like, oh man. That's like it, it's, a little, that's a little intense there. It, it's odd how it can kind of swing that pendulum of being slapstick and then mm -hmm. like psychological horror and mm -hmm. like the, it swings hard. Yeah, like, and it's like one second to another and then back again and then sometimes mm -hmm. it kind of pivots in the middle mm -hmm. real quick. It's like it's like a weird Newton's cradle. Like like like, <laughs> there, like there's a scene in it where like uh basically you see like the main character Ash. Uh, just kind of going crazy. Yeah. And, and like, there's, like, everything on the wall, like, there's a deer head that, like, is, like, moving its head like crazy. Everything's, la everyone's laughing. Yeah. Everything, like, becomes alive and, like, Ash starts to lose his mind and he starts laughing with it along with, like, everything in the room laughing. Yeah. It, like, it drones on for, like, an entire minute. Yeah, it's a long scene. It's hilarious. But, it, like, like it's, it's, like, it's, like, hilarious at the beginning, but then, like, as it goes on, you're just, like, slowly going, like, oh, my gosh, this is yeah. still happening. But then I still feel like it swings back again. I yeah. think it comes back around to being funny again. It's such mm -hmm. an interesting movie. You gotta be into slapstick or you're not mm -hmm. gonna like it. Also, I, he, like... His hand becomes possessed and he yeah, taps it off. And his, then he puts on a chainsaw on, on his, his hand, hand and he says, Groovy. Yes. So, it's so good. It's so good. I'm sorry. I didn't want to steal your thunder, Max, but I also love this movie. This has become Max Jameson staring at me while I'm talking about <laughs> this because I'm the only one who hasn't seen Why, it. Why haven't you watched Evil Dead 2, <laughs> Isaac? Oh, man. Also, Evil good. Dead 1 is really good. Oh, Evil Dead 1 is a lot of fun as well. Evil Dead 2 is like a, actually basically a remake of the first one like yeah. in, in like concept. But like the story beats that happen are very different. Yeah, gotcha. it's like definitely like the same idea, but cool. And then, do you want to talk about Army of Darkness? Just so well, we can Army say. of Darkness is a direct sequel to Evil Dead Two. However, Evil Dead One is not a necessarily a sequel, or Evil Dead Two is not necessarily a sequel to Evil Dead One. Yeah. Anyway, Army of Darkness is when Ash Campbell, the one. Oh wait, is Ash Campbell? It's Bruce Campbell. His I, I know. I, I know. I know the main character. Ooh, Ash. What's Ash. His, what's his, his last name is... I want to say catch him, but I know that's Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call him Ash. We'll just call anyway, him Ash. Ash, the main character. Uh, he, at, at the end of Evil Dead 2, he gets tra like time travels spoilers. to... Oh, yeah. Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. He, he time travels to uh, medieval times, and now he has to, like, fight, like, skeletons and... Like, and he says stuff like, give me some sugar, baby. Yeah. And then he shoots up with a shotgun. With a he's got shotgun. a chainsaw on his hand. And then, and then he's got a boomstick in the other. That's yes. That's his, his shotgun. He's like, this 
is my boomstick. Boom <laughs> We're still people... staring at Isaac, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Do this... we want to talk about Ash versus Evil Dead, the television <laughs> series? <laughs> <laughs> Which is extremely gory, yeah. but that's like the best part. Well, they're all gory. It's just like Ash vs. Evil Dead has the new technology in it. To At really least a in- fourth of the budget for Evil Dead 2 is probably blood. devoted to fake blood. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. There's a lot of blood. Evil Dead 2. It just like pours out of the walls and like like a fire hydrant. And out of people. Yes. Out of people as well. Yeah. That's good, man. My recommendation <laughs> is... Maybe the most drastically opposite. <laughs> it's a nonfiction science book. Uh, it's very good, actually. Non-fiction. So it's a book. It's it's a uh, it's a book called Science Fictions by Stuart Ritchie. Uh, I listened to the audio book, which is read by the author. He's Scottish, so you know it's going to be good. You know who else is Scottish? Sean Connery. <laughs> and Willie off of The Simpsons. He's the groundskeeper. Yeah. Groundskeeper Willie. This is my recommendation! <laughs> Alright. Uh, so I want to... I kind of need to explain a little bit for this book to make sense. So, uh, in our culture, right, science kind of has the utmost respect, right? So, mm-hmm. it's, it holds a very important office in our society, that right? That depends on who you ask nowadays. But in... As far as discourse goes, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Like... Or science policy that, like, making, or science that benefits people is held up to the utmost. Well, just like science in general, right? It's, yeah. it's viewed as the end all, or like the absolute truth, right? Mm-hmm. In, in a world and a universe of unknowns, it is the one thing that we know, we understand, right? Mm-hmm. Is uh, or at least like the the things that we do understand, we only understand through scientific means, and, and so if you think of really important science discoveries, right? Like, they determine the way that we make policies, right? The, the way that we interact with one another. They determine, like, if two of us are in an argument, right? If I pull up a scientific study that backs my argument, the argument's over, right? Like, that's how we view it, right? Unless it's like, I say you're pulling up alternative facts and I choose not to believe your facts and choose to believe uh, my facts. But but for, for the reason, like, to go along with this book tend to really, like, I mean, you, you have to have a sort of an inherent trust a little bit of the scientific this is, process. This is for someone who likes the scientific process and not someone who likes to have confirmation bias. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, you kind of have to have an open mind going into yeah. this because this entire book is about how the scientific process is corrupted. Ooh. Ooh. So, the, I, and, and if you think about this, right, so this whole book is about how... so. Stuart Ritchie is a uh, Scottish psychologist. Right. um, And he kind of uh, realized... So I think the book starts with him reading this article or this paper, this scientific paper that was published, about how undergraduate students at this particular university had psychic powers. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense, right? So he and a couple of his colleagues did a like a rebuttal study or whatever right they like it's a peer review correct the, well sort of so peer review happens before a paper is published okay so this is after a paper was published right. so it's sort of like a critique uh like a post-publishing critique but the paper that the or the journal that published the paper refused to take the critique um and that's kind of like how he opened this but it's like so they are the alternative facts people in that case yeah, so I yeah. mean, like, that's the role of scientists, right? Like, the role of scientists is to question and critique yeah. each other, right? Like, that's the point. What, well, that's that what, is, that's that what is the, the actual scientific method, right? Yeah, it's that's... very close to, like, the Socratic method in which yeah. you toss questions at a thing until they're all answered. Yeah, and that's 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 what we expect, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what we expect peer review to be. Right? Yeah, we want people to, like, read something, and if someone says you're wrong, you'd be like, oh, my bad. Yeah, and, yeah. and you, like... It's not about me being right. It's about us finding the truth, truth. together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at least, like, scientific process in theory is about is that, that, right? But the way that it's set up is the publication process and the incentives from universities for scientists to publish their papers and all of these factors combined, along with positivity bias from humans. Like, yeah. we, uh, we like a positive result way more than a negative result. All of these things combined together to create a scientific system 
that incentivizes neg- like false positives and uh, fraudulent data and the corrupting of the scientific process in order for certain scientific results to look better than they are. And also, with the whole scientific process being cumulative, right? Like, we build on top of each other. You know, in this book, Richie looks back at all of these, like, past papers that are, like, fundamental to psychology or these other fields, which have been cited hundreds or thousands of times, right? That these papers are fraudulent or these papers are misinformed. So that means all of the research that's been done with those as a foundation are also misinformed. And so when you think about the, the fact that like science builds on science, yeah. but if that other science is wrong, then ooh, that's interesting. It's a domino mm-hmm. effect. And then think about going back to the implications of that where our society, we value science so much and we like policies are made on science, right? Like our the our frames of mind are determined on the truthfulness of science, right? So right. if that is not truthful, that's a dilemma, right? So this book is really interesting. It dives all into that. I definitely recommend it. I read the audiobook or listened to it. It was really good, but I think the actual book has a lot of diagrams and things that I didn't get to experience to the fullest. So I'd recommend reading the actual book, but both are great. So um, anyways, it's it's a really good read. Great. You know did you, who I... did you read it? I read it. I finished it like last week. Cool, cool, cool. It was great. Came out this year. Do you know who mm-hmm. I think needs side her? Yeah. Sean Connery. Oh. I mean... I thought we'd kill the podcast at that. I feel like that's a great ending line. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> I'm we, Sean Connery, and gotta... I need an app to tell me not to slap a woman. <laughs> All right, well, uh, once again at the end of the podcast, this is the point where you should stop listening to Jameson. <laughs> stop listening to Sean This is where you Connery. stop listening to Jameson. Did you guys watch um, The League of Extraordinary oh, Gentlemen? Um, <laughs> Nobody did. Thank you guys for listening to Tangent this week. It's been a blast. I hope you guys liked our applications. Mine is Jameson's. I don't know. I, the sidecar one was all right. Sidecar? Uh, sidecar. Uh, <laughs> if you guys have any questions, comments, recommendations, app ideas that we can't guarantee we won't steal, you can send those over to thetangentcast at gmail.com. Junior, give, her, give him that phone number. I was going to. Or Junior. you can leave us a voicemail at 479-339-9041. That's 479-339-9041. Um, as always, we'd love if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That's always appreciated. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. You guys have anything else you want to say? Salutations. Yeah. We, will, we will be buying a motorcycle with a sidecar, so hit us up if you want to ride. And we will litigate. Mm-hmm.